My name is Nicole Romaniere, and I'm the curator of the City Exhibition Manga. This exhibition is the largest exhibition of manga um, coming out of Japan um, that's probably been undertaken. We're looking at manga in the round from very many different angles. Um, manga is visual um, story, serial storytelling through line. Starts in about the 1880s when you get Western technologies such as printing presses, newspapers, satire, and um, comics coming into Yokohama, and it meets with a very, very strong, long Japanese tradition of picture storytelling, and manga is born. What we're doing here is showing manga its history, how to read it, the different genres, manga and society, and looking actually beyond manga to where manga influences and its influencers. What makes this exhibition incredibly special are genga drawings. Those are the original drawings for the manga, and they're really the copyright of the manga artists. So they take these drawings and then give them to the publishers to print. Now, genga drawings are mostly owned by the artists. In fact, they're not normally in museums. And so we're very, very lucky to borrow them from the artists through the publishing houses and display them. What you see when you look at them is something different than a print experience. You see the artist's kind of, we call it the wrist, the artist's style. You look very carefully and you can really almost feel the artist in them. Inoue Takehiko is a master. And when we look at his vagabond or we look at his slam dunk or his reel, it's incredible. You just think, how could he have done this with a nib pen? In, and you, it invites further um, examination. The closer you look, the more you see. And what's interesting is after you've seen it, then you go to his printed material and it feels fresh. There's just a different aspect to it. So it's really worth it to see these original drawings. For many, like for example, Dragon Ball, um, Toriyama Akira's drawings, it's a unique chance. The artists normally don't show them. You often see reproductions or the printed material. But here, um, pretty much for all of the artists, we've got the original material. Occasionally it's drawn originally in, in digital, but we've worked with the artist to, to give you um, as close a rendition um, as possible to what they feel is the original. So you have a one-to-one -one authentic experience. The one thing I'd like you to take away, in fact, there are many things I'd like you to take away besides, besides a, a fluency in manga, is um, how manga really works and how good manga really works. And what you see is oftentimes the action scene beforehand, the setting up before, and then what happens afterwards. You don't actually see the actual action itself. That what that action takes place in your mind, and so it, you start to participate. Let me give you an example. Hagiomoto did the fantastic Po clan, and we have four examples, um, four wonderful drawings, Genga drawings. And the last two, which are consecutive, you see a hand, and the hand looks close up. And then you see the action of the hand moving, and the hand you know is going to hit a gentleman's face, but you don't see it hitting the face. You see after it's hit the face, he topples back, and then he falls down a grand staircase, and there's this kaleidoscope of images in a swirl. So we have imagined that sound in our, in the slap in our head and the falling in ourself. And the picture has enforced the before and after. And so we've actually become part of the action, part of the scene. And it's something you just don't forget. You're viscerally involved in that manga. Do you know there are so many pieces in, in this exhibition that I love? There are also pieces that should be in this exhibition that aren't, um, and that makes me incredibly sad. It's not because we didn't value them or like them, but there was only a limited amount of space, um, and that was hard. But we have to make tough choices, um, and um, I'm hoping there's going to be a Manga 2 exhibition, and so we can have um, the works that should be here and, and celebrate them. The pieces that I particularly liked um, there are a number of them, and each one are my little babies. But um, in particular, the one that um, always I come back to as kind of a, my basis and also gives me solace, and to be honest, inspiration, is Morohoshi Daijiro, Ankoku Shinwa, The Dark Myth. It's incredible. It's not tra translated yet into English. It needs to be. Um, I'd love to do it, but it's, it, it is just a spectacular piece about history, curation, 
about Jomon figurines, about Japanese history, but also about contemporary times and the kind of seamless flow between the two and dark forces and forces of light. Um, it's spectacular. The one that I'm impressed with, that I'm looking into now, that I find you know just a new way forward, is one written by a, a person named Pampanya. That's P-A-N-P-A-N-Y-A. And this person is incredible. There's something really magical about their manga. They draw the backgrounds and then they sketch the figures. I think the figures are drawn in pencil and the figures are put into the background. So there's a separation between the fore and the background and you feel the figures are almost floating in there, almost as if they're ephemeral and in this built-in um, dystopian, but also um, kind of, uh, you know, very hyper-realistic, but also, um, I don't know, fuzzy background. And it's that, that separation between the two that makes it so exciting. And when you see it, you think, ah, oh, this is amazing. This is perhaps something that we're going to see more of in the future. Thanks for watching. Don't miss our next installment. Monday, Kutsuada Chie. She's going to teach you how to draw manga, part one.